Hi, welcome to Viewpoint, Hexagon Safety Infrastructure and Geospatial Divisions vodcast series. And I'm your host, Jack Williams. And today we're going to be talking about a subject that I uh, enjoy talking about quite a bit. I'm kind of close to it. Um, and, and it's artificial intelligence. And specifically, we're going to talk about how artificial intelligence or AI applies to modern public safety technology, um, what it means. And in particular, we're going to discuss the role that AI um, plays and could play in a real time crime center. Um, for some background, and, and if you're listening to this, you probably have some concept of what a real time crime center is. Uh, real time crime center is a term we've seen used more and more in the public safety industry. I think it's very common in North America. Um, outside of North America, I think you, they might be using different terminology, but there's still sort of uh, this concept of a situation room or real-time intelligence um, to track crime as it's happening on, on uh, in real time and uh, all the different sensors and video assets that could be centralized. And you kind of view it as a technology hub used by law enforcement agencies to track um, real-time patterns, incidents, uh, with the overall goal of preventing and reducing crime and being able to respond immediately um, through integration of, of a wide variety of sensors, systems, applications, and assets. Um, according to the uh, Department of Justice uh, Bureau of Justice Assistance, the mission of a real-time crime center is to provide a law enforcement agency with the ability to capitalize on a wide and expanding range of technologies for efficient and effective policing. That's a mouthful. Um, but basically, uh, what we've noticed is, is this concept of having sort of this common picture where you have a lot of real-time information, data from different systems, dispatch, records, license plate readers, uh, different subsystems and, and, and cloud-based data services, searching, et cetera, that many major cities have um, established. So you, you see a lot of these real-time crime centers in in uh, larger cities to better protect their residents, officers, and communities. Um, these real-time crime centers can house one or more multiple agencies. Uh, they receive uh, large amounts of money, uh, large amounts of data from many sources, um, as mentioned, like gunshot detection, things like drones, license plate readers, dispatch records, electronic monitoring systems, uh, information from the NCIC, and more. So. All of this data provides a bird's eye view of what, what's going on in a given situation, but it also um, presents a challenge, and that is um, zeroing in on the actionable nuggets of information to pass on um, to field responders, emergency communication centers, PSAPs. Um, and that's where the real-time incident center as a service technology with assistive AI makes all the difference. And today I'm lucky to be joined by my colleagues, Francisco Erdos, who is a business development manager here at Hexagon Safety Infrastructure and Geospatial, as well as Marcella Tellis, our strategic product manager for Hexagon Connect. Um, Francisco, uh, Marcella, uh, thanks for joining me. Glad to be here, Jack. Yes, thanks, Jack, for having us and for providing a platform to discuss such an important topic. Awesome. Well, let's dive right in. And uh, Marcel, I'm going to propose this question to you. Um, you know, we all, if you watch movies, you get on Netflix, you've watched Terminator, you've watched uh, Minority Report, uh, iRobot, any of these other things. When people, people have this uh, uh, perception of what artificial intelligence mean, when they hear that, I think something goes off in their brain the term AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and you start to think of all these crazy sci-fi movies. Um, I know personally that that's a little far-fetched to some degree in, in terms of how AI is applied in public safety. Um, but I'd like to get your take. What does AI mean when it comes to public safety? Um, and in particular, what does the, the concept of assistive AI mean in, in public safety? Can you uh, expound upon that? Absolutely. So um, I'm actually glad that you mentioned the term Netflix, because the reality is that AI is here and it's here to stay. From the emails that we were typing a few minutes before we jumped on this call to when we watch movies on Netflix, the recommendations that we get, or when we use our cell phones and our cars, 
AI is here and it's here to stay. And if you think about it, when you think about public safety, it really aligns with an industry where time is of the essence. Any situation can escalate within seconds and seconds really represent the difference between life and death. So to have a technology that is in the background running 24 seven, providing you with insights, analyzing, identifying patterns, correlations, working for you is very critical within public safety. And I think that long gone are the days where we would only see AI in the movies and we would think about this characters that don't exist in real life. Because again, I mean, AI is something that we are, all of us are currently using in a day to day. And I think that it is very important for us in Hexagon to really adapt that mentality and be in that mindset because we have a solution that is ready to be implemented and deployed today. And that is really Hexagon Connect with Assistive AI with Smart Advisor. And a lot of people talk about Assistive AI as having an extra set of eyes. I think of it as having eyes on your back because not only you're seeing more of the same information, but you are actually detecting items, data, and information that are not visible to the human eye. And those, um, those patterns, that data, that information is coming on a, in a form of an insight, which is one of the points that I wanna emphasize. From a Hexagon Connect perspective and assistive AI, you will get an insight, but from the overall workflow, the human element is still at the center, at the front and center of the overall solution, meaning you're not going to be having a system that is going to make automatic decisions without you as a decision maker or as the Connect user being involved. It is really about empowering data-driven decisions. Well, thanks, Marcel. I, I like that definition. And so when we think of, uh, you know, the broad term AI, you know, it conjures up all these, these Hollywood type images, but this concept of assistive AI with uh, what we have in, in Hexagon Connect really sounds like um, a way to provide, like you said, a, a sort of eyes on your back, um, a way to see the unseen. If, if that's a fair uh, tagline, um, by continuously sort of mining data in real time and but still keeping the the human in the loop. So I, I kind of see the 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 practical use of AI and public safety is in an assistive nature, and we provide that at Hexagon. So uh, Francisco, do you have anything you'd like to add to that conversation? Well, actually, I would like to uh, go and, and and talk about specific. Uh, type of users and you know we have been talking about the real-time crime center and I would like to you know uh, mention how this technology really apply into those location you know understand the personas behind it you know starting with you know what is the real-time crime center you know real-time crime center really started um, uh, on the concept of real time, real time crime center started about uh, 15 to 20 years ago. You know, the 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 first one was, uh, or one of the first one was New York City that started in uh, 2005. Uh, but really, real time crime center is basically an evolution from um, from situational rooms, crisis centers, uh, war rooms that uh, were known for for many, many years. Uh, but, you know, police, in, in the case of law enforcement and police, they really wanted to have uh, a location that integrate their operation with their investigation. You know, for the most part, in before real-time crime centers, there were a big separation between the, the actual response to uh, crime incidents and the investigation after the fact. And, and they thought that they were losing a lot of time uh, between one and the other. And that valuable time was, uh, you know, causing many issues on uh, solving crimes 
and uh, reducing the impact of those crimes. So that's why uh, they came with the, the idea of these real-time crime centers where they can uh, pretty much eliminate or reduce the gap between the operation and the response and the investigations. And, uh, you know, it's a big difference between a real-time crime center and a PSAP or a 911 center where, you know, the PSAP is more for uh, uh, providing a, a fast response to a service call. You know, somebody called 911 and the job of, of a call taker and a dispatcher are to receive that call, capture the information, uh, identify if this is a real crime, a, a real emergency or not. And then if it, if it is, then you dispatch as soon as possible. It's a, a production line. You know, you need to handle many calls. I mean, in the U.S., they have 600,000 911 calls a day. So they don't have time to be looking into databases and videos. They have to uh, move those calls as soon as possible, dispatch resources as soon as possible in five minutes or less. That is the goal. The real-time crime center is different. It's intended to, you know, get more information from different sources and have different resources like analysts, crime analysts are, and more specialized operators to uh, understand the situation, to uh, try to investigate and respond at the same time as a crime is happening and to you know reduce the impact of that crime and eventually become a deterrent uh, for future crimes to happen, uh, especially when those crime centers become effective uh, in solving uh, problems and responding to crime incidents, then um, you know that, that becomes a deterrent in itself. Um, so you know that's what I want to mention about uh, real-time crime centers in particular. Obviously, the use of AI in those centers will help. Uh, to identify faster, uh, you know, relevant uh, incident, important incident. Um, and we can talk more about that as we continue here. Yeah, I, I really like the, uh, the description of the, of the differences between the Emergency Communication Center or PSAP uh, relative to the real-time crime center, you know, it really is investigation and response at the, at the same time. And, um, you're right. I mean, 911, the, in peak, in times of peak activity, there's a lot going on and, um, you know, not answering a call, not responding in a fast time is their number one priority uh, as well as keeping the community safe and, and the first responders safe. But the, the real-time crime center is really bringing an element of, okay, let's try to connect the dots in real time instead of doing this sort of post-mortem you know, hey, okay, well, they robbed a bank. Well, let's go back and look. Well, they've already robbed the bank. They're down the road, right? So <laughs> as they're robbing the bank, let's let's connect this dot with this dot and try to head off a response that 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 minimizes the impact and creates better outcomes. All right, I'll stop <laughs> gibbering. Um, so good answer. I like that, Francisco. Um, back at you here. So what role would you say AI plays in a real-time crime center? Um, you know, maybe at a high level, give me more of a generic example, but uh, if you got something specific, would like to hear that as well. Sure. Well, I mentioned before that in a piece app, for example, they don't have much time to look into databases, videos, et cetera. Uh, they need to move those calls as soon as possible. The real-time crime center have access uh, to as much data sources as possible. It doesn't have to be the data sources from the particular agency uh, operating this real-time crime center could be their neighboring uh, agency, neighboring jurisdictions. Um, so you have as many different CAT systems accessing, uh, uh, connected to this real-time crime center. You have video feeds from multiple sources, uh, public cameras, private cameras, uh, um, from multiple organizations. You have alarms, you have devices, IoT devices. So you have tons of data uh, arriving in real time and assistive AI in, in, in our case will help on 
on identify what data is relevant because there's so much data. Um, first of all, the more data you have, the better. But at the same time, the more data you have, the more chances you're going to miss something that is important because there's a lot of information coming to you in a in a, a common operating picture. But sometimes you don't know what's important. I mean, we saw that many years ago with video surveillance, where you know, as more and more cameras were deployed uh, for uh, smart city solutions, for example, uh, the less likely that a, a video operator was going to be able to identify which camera has something important happening, right? So that's why they came up with uh, video analytics. So in the case of you know our products with assistive AI, it's the same concept of of what uh, uh, video analytics was for for video surveillance. It is a solution to identify of all the data that we're receiving from different CAT systems, uh, video feeds, alarms, what is important? What has some relevant information for me to either identify that uh, a situation is happening or to give me more information about it, like some similarities, uh, something that it doesn't look evident initially for the operator uh, and can give me more information on how to address that situation, uh, uh, what process should I should I follow uh, with this information? So assistive AI is really, you know, an assistant for that uh, analyst, an operator, a supervisor, an incident commander in a real time crime center to to guide them on on the information, to point to information that is relevant and to help them with the decision making and the process that they need to follow. So uh, thanks, um, Francisco. Marcella, anything to add to that on, on, in terms of examples? Um... From, I mean, from a solution perspective and from a real-time crime center, Francisco is absolutely correct that a solution like Hexagon Connect with Smart Advisor is working for you in the background, eliminating data that you don't need. And we also have to be very clear right now, the, the focus and the functionality within Smart Advisor with Connect is on incident data, but it's doing exactly that, is identifying what is relevant, is identifying abnormalities and patterns that are being used as insights so that, again, as your um, decision maker, you can have this digested data to make a decision. And that is really aligning with the entire purpose of the real-time crime center, which as you guys both referenced, the main purpose is to have different technologies to solve crime as effective as possible. Excellent. Um, so I'm going to pivot and fire this one back at you, Marcella. Um, all right. So I've mentioned this term earlier, so the audience might not know what, what the heck I'm talking about. Um, uh, I mentioned this term called real time incident center as a service. Um, so it's a real time incident center, but as a service, you know, like every other little as a service acronym. Um, so uh, this is a term that's been coined by one of the big uh, industry analysts out there. Um, and uh, Hexagon Connect has been mentioned as an example of this real-time incident center as a service. Um, now that Hexagon Connect uh, has this ability with assistive AI to do that automatic detection of trends, anomalies, patterns, similarities, um, how does it enhance the operations of real-time crime center um, and then also like, this has got to be a big differentiator, uh, for connect, right? So you're absolutely right. It is a key differentiator. And, but before I get to that, the first thing that I want to do is to level set, um, everyone who might be listening to us or watching us. And I want everyone to think about positioning and talking about hexagon connect 
every time you think about a real-time crime center. And the reason why is because it is the one solution that brings all the data into one common interface. So when we talk about data, what are we specifically talking about, right? We're talking about incidents coming from CAD. We're talking about having the ability on an ongoing situation to track and locate the responding unit or locate the location of assets. You have also the ability to see the status of different alarms and you can also uh, see video all in one. And as you mentioned, that by itself is a killer application and that is what Hexagon Connect is. But now we have embedded assistive AI. And so that analysis, when you need to, the purpose of the real-time crime center is not only to solve crime, but to solve it as fast as possible. And ideally, and this is where I really think that Hexagon Connect with a smart advisor is a game changer is when not only you can identify trends and be proactive, but you can even beyond that prevent crime because of the information that you're gaining from smart advisor, because you have, again, technology working for you 24 seven and giving you that information as an extra set of data that can be used to make a decision. And so I really think that this is going to help every single analyst by providing real time insights that will allow them to make better informed decisions. And at the end of the day, what that translates to is into safety for both law enforcement officers and also for civilians. Excellent. Um... Yeah, I, I can just imagine, right? I mean, the, you have something proactively uh, alerting you, helping you, amplifying your intuition. Um, yes, these analysts, prime analysts, uh, folks who do work in the real time kind of very experienced. They, they went through a lot of training, but still to sift through the weeds of all of that data feeding into the center and having this, this platform at Hexagon Connect with this capability, such as assistive AI, proactively alerting you and saying, hey, you might want to pay attention to this. Still a set decision, still human in the loop with the assistive nature of it. But um, that's a game changer. Like, I, I'd like to apply this to things in my life outside of real-time crime centers, such as, uh, you know, automatic tracking of, 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 of sports betting or something of that nature, Francisco. <laughs> you, you with me on that? So, uh, anyways, I will, not, I will not turn this podcast into a sports conversation. Um, all right, so I'm going to flip it back to you, uh, uh, Francisco. All right. I'm gonna put you on the spot. What is the number one advantage to using assistive AI in a real time crime center? Well, obviously they're looking for improved effectiveness and productivity and assistive, assistive AI will help them particularly in that area where uh, Marcella mentioned it's not about only solving crime, it's solving crime really fast. And, and effective, and that's what uh, assistive AI can can do for you. Uh, help you, first of all, identify situation faster, uh, uh, getting leads about uh, particular incidents that you are following or particular crimes that have become uh, an issue for your city. Uh, provide those leads to, to try to identify suspects uh, or, or information that can lead to solving that situation. So improving the overall productivity and effectiveness is definitely the number one uh, uh, benefit of assistive AI, especially with Hexagon Connect. As I mentioned, if you have, the more information you have, uh, the more important is, is using an assistive AI solution to not lose track and to be able to to identify those important pieces of information that are received in real time. You know, um, you mentioned before about examples and, uh, you know, there's many different examples. You, you may have a series of crime happening in your city that have similarities in terms of weapons or type of incidents. Assistive AI will immediately 
uh, advice, alert an operator when uh, when a situation is is happening in real time that may have uh, a particular keyword associated to a piece of evidence uh, that you already know or a partial license plate of a vehicle and uh, immediately something happened not necessarily in your own jurisdiction it could be a neighboring jurisdiction uh, you may get this information that give you uh, the opportunity to uh, address this particular crime that is happening and notify the detective and the first responders immediately that uh, the person committing that crime may be the same person they're looking for a series of crime. So, you know, those, you know, those are examples of, of the use of assistive AI. Uh, you may be monitoring a sporting event, going back to your sport example, there may be a sporting event and you have may you may have multiple organizations managing the security of that sporting event from you know state and local organizations and you know you want to know when something happened in that area so you create a mission uh, based on location uh, where you know immediately when something happened in the vicinity of that uh, sporting event uh, so you you, you can share that information with the rest of the uh, security personnel from multiple organizations. There are many, many, many examples of, of, of and use cases for assistive AI uh, in, uh, in a real-time crime center and in the case of our particular product, Hexagon Connect. Excellent. Um, I guess a question for either one of you, I'm kind of gonna throw a curveball at you. How do they do this today? I mean, what what is the what does an operator do in a real time? How do they how do they juggle all this? Is it literally sort of a, a hunting and pecking and, and sort of accessing different systems and data sources at you know in their own interface and trying to bring well, that together in their head? I mean Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and it's important to mention that no real time crime center is 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 the same in in all the different cities uh now different cities have different priorities different issues different type of crimes and every city or county build their real-time crime center based on their particular needs and and particular issues and uh, and also the uh the the different resources working in a real-time crime center can have little different roles. Um, you know, you may have an analyst, you know, similar to a crime analyst that, that was there before real time crime centers, but now it's a crime analyst working in real time together with the operational person. So, uh, so a real time crime center operator could be a combination of, of, of a dispatcher, uh, or a specialized dispatcher with crime analyst uh, capabilities, or it could be two people working together, an analyst and an operator, um, uh, one managing the response, the other one manage, managing the analysis and the investigation. And uh, so there could be multiple roles in a real-time crime center. There could be an incident commander, and that's something that we're starting to see also more is that, you know, for the most part, incident commanders try to get closer to the incident and operate, you know, manage that incident from their vehicle. Uh, but more and more we see incident commanders also operating from the real time crime center. Why? Because they have all the information in front of them. They have the videos, they have the incident, they have the communication to the, to the people in the field and, um, and they have access to their databases. So that incident commander may have uh, uh, more information. In other cases, they just put a, a real-time crime center on wheels, right? They put it on a, on a mobile command vehicle, uh, especially when you have planned events like uh, festivals or or uh, sporting events. You uh, you move these mobile commands, and you those mobile commands can be a real-time crime center because they have access 
to all the data, the videos, the incidents from this location. So there's, there's many functions and roles that can be in a real-time crime center. But for the most part, our, our more specialized users compared to the PISA, their analysts, there's more specialized operator. There could be a real uh, an incident commander. Those those are the type of of roles in in these type of uh, centers. Thanks, Francisco. I appreciate that, um, Marcella. Um, all right, so I got to I got to circle back, but I, I want to see if you have any input on that question too. So first off, what's the number one advantage to using assistive AI in a real time crime center? And oh. um, yeah, we'll start with that. Go with that. Go ahead. Sorry. I, yeah, so for me, as Francisco was saying, is really optimizing workflows. Seconds matter. Seconds matter. We all know that, especially in public safety. So it's having that technology working for you. And from, from my experience visiting uh, real-time crime centers throughout North America, they are, I think that, they're based on the principle of plan for the worst and hope for the best, right? They're all, there's a, the day-to-day -day crime analyst, but when a situation escalates, a lot of them are built to be expandable, to have all the different personas, all the different roles that Francisco was describing working into one room. But as you mentioned, there's a lot of technology that you need to access. You need to access video, you need to, see who are the responding units. Sometimes you have multiple agencies depending on the specific location that the event is happening. So it is very critical. And that's one of the items that before uh, we go, I wanted to also um, be very clear that is one of the main advantages of Connect and Smart Advisor is that all this information is going to be able to be shared with other agencies. So when Francisco was talking about a particular type of incident uh, happening at a specific location, you can share that with your neighboring agency. So it's that power of technology experience. I mean, we know from dispatchers that when they hear the call from the police officer, they can identify even without words from the tone of voice if a situation needs to be escalated or not. So it's that human element and that technology working together in a solution that brings, again, all these different sets of data that I truly, I am not aware of any other solution like Connect that has embedded assistive AI. I know of solutions that do have a representation, a collection of data that is displayed in a common interface but that element and that function of assistive AI, I am not familiar of a solution out there today. So really important that every time we talk to customers, that every time we have an opportunity to talk about Connect, we really emphasize on the fact that we have Smart Advisor running for you, working 24 seven in the background to help alleviate that um, large amount of data and that overwhelming, again, I, the whole reason why I started this conversation with the amount of stress that um, public safety and law enforcement officers deal with day in and day out is because we want to help them digest that data versus feeding more and more information that in a critical situation can become just noise. Yeah. I I, that, that's an excellent point, Marcella. I mean, I've, I've talked to some folks recently who told me, you know, technology's good, right? And, and for the most part, I, I think public safety gets a bad rap for being sort of risk averse. But I think that that's, you know, first off, it's a missing critical system that, that really can't go down and people's lives are on the line. And I think people in this space talk about that 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 element quite a bit. So I'm not going to overhype that. But I, I also think... Um, Adding more complexity, I think a lot of people potentially view additional technology as, as um, just adding another layer of complexity um, that I don't need. But with something like assistive AI, it's doing it for you, right? Like, like it's working in the background. Uh, it's, it's trying to say, hey, are these things related or 
Um, am I looking at the metadata of X, Y, and Z that might be cross-jurisdictional type of events, maybe classified differently, um, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe I'm, and, and I want to say, hey, there's something going on. Pull up these cameras, uh, pull up these uh, local resources, talk to this person, look up this search. All that kind of stuff can be automated and really uh, work out of the box. Like, like it helps you. It's not an extra step. It's not another button I have to click or an alarm I got to listen to. It's going to, to do that for you. And I think public safety, when it comes to adopting technology, that's that's the key, right? It's got to be automatic. And then and then, and then once the, everybody gets familiar with that, then they can start to expand and, and really get into the ins and outs of, of all the really cool things you can do. But uh, would you guys say that's fair with this assistive AI concept, um, what I'm talking about? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's very important to make the job easy for the operators and the staff in this type of location. They are in a very stressful situation. Uh, there's, uh, you know, mental fatigue. Uh, they, you know, they have to deal with very difficult situations. And, you know, this technology really is helping to, you know, you probably are going to miss information because of all that stress and fatigue that you have. So this type of solution really help on, on the well-being of, of the staff of these uh, real-time crime centers. Um, I mean, assistive AI can also be very useful for peace apps. And the other thing is that I, I wanted to mention that we're we're talking in general a real-time crime center. But some some cities are also expanding uh, crime centers uh, or real time centers to include other type of non criminal situations like uh, disaster, natural disasters or man made disasters uh, and and manage uh, this, the the overall type of situations that affect you know the citizens uh, from crime to natural disaster incidents. Uh, tra uh, traffic accidents and those kind of situations uh, and, and be able to manage uh, more complete uh, in a more complete way with more information uh, that you get usually from a PSAP, for example. So those major type of events are also being managed from these type of centers. They don't call it real-time crime center. They call it real-time intelligence centers. But I think it's important to to also mention that uh, it's not only crime type of incidents are being managed from these type of uh, uh, operation centers. Yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad you added that in, uh, Francisco, because I was going to ask you if there's anything you'd like to add, and and that really hits on the point. I mean, we're talking about real time crime. There's also other real type of scenarios: crisis, emergency management, as you as you talked about, event planning. And even just creating sort of a smart city infrastructure where you're communicating with pro private public uh, NGOs, it doesn't, it maybe even blue sky type of uh, collaboration and, and situational awareness that you want to get across, not just gray skies, you know, the world is falling. Um, good point. Hey, Marcella, before we wrap up, is there anything you'd like to add uh, to this conversation? The only thing that I want to add to the conversation is to ask everyone who will listen to us and is watching us to have an open conversation as a product manager is extremely important to talk to the people who's out in the field with the customers understanding those workflows and everything that we covered today is just the beginning i mean we're going to continue to expand the connect platform there's a lot of functionality that is coming 2023 and we're really going to focus on expanding smart advisor within hexagon connect and again i welcome everyone to have an open conversation and work together to be able to provide really cutting edge technology that has clear benefits to our customers i wanted to thank you both very much for for um, taking the time to, to come talk to us and the audience about Hexagon Connect, assistive AI, and, and a specific use case around real-time crime centers, but uh, also opening up that 
that insight into other types of applications. Um, so Marcella and Francisco, thank you very much. I, I look forward to having you back on a future episode. Thank you, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for having us. Yeah, well, so, so thank you both again. Um, and to the audience, um, for more interesting stories, uh, vodcasts, blogs, etc., please check out hexagon.com. Thanks for tuning in to Viewpoint. And until next time, take it easy. Thank you.